This tutorial is going to show you how to make this mini album. It's a seven and a half by nine and a half inch mini album. The pages are seven by nine. Um, the paper collection is by Authentique and it's called Dame. And um, take a look at the cover. Um, I kind of was deciding if I should put something down here, but I guess I just wanted this to be the focal point. So when you open it, um, there is a mat for a photo and over here I have um, little tags poked uh, into some um, well pocket here and a little pocket here I guess this can come out this is actually the magnet closure also and this opens up and you have some pages here I think this is probably one of my favorite pages. And then on this side, this is kind of a, did not turn out what, like I had wanted, um, all related to magnets, but these open up if you untie the seam binding and then there, this opens up and you have some lace on the sides and some cards here. This is a double pocket. <clears throat> and a long one here. It's really big. And then this side has this pocket down here and these flap up. This card is what's keeping it closed. These go up. And I showed this in the tutorial too. So, uh, And then this is a pocket. It's holding a card. And so to keep those flaps from going crazy, just put that in there. Uh, and it stays closed and on this side we have an L pocket I still need to make a paper it opens up and then you have this Paris scene this side has some lace buttons this goes up this goes down and this goes to the side Two mats for pictures. This is a pocket right here. This is a pocket back behind it. It opens up. This is a pocket with some cards. Just have some lace. I love this page. It's got a tag in there. And this opens. And down and up, and I just have some cards in here. And then finally the waterfall. If you are interested in learning how to make the base pages and the um, hinge and cover, go ahead and keep watching. Uh, thanks for subscribing to my channel and enjoy the tutorial. If you're interested in making the Dame um, mini album. This will be the tutorial for the base pages and the pages that are inside the book. Um, I do not write down the measurements down in the description box just because of the amount of time it takes and with my full-time job it just is a little bit too much. So anyway, um, I do write it on the sticky note so that you can freeze the camera if you need to and I'm right to write some things down. So here we go. This is a seven by, all the pages are seven by nine and so to start off with, it's best just to make all four base pages. And so to do that, you're going to need four pieces at seven by nine and you don't score those at all. And then you're also going to need four of them at seven by 10. And then on the 10 inch side, you need to score one half inch on the left and one half inch on the right. So that would be at the half inch mark and the nine and a half inch mark. Or some people just do half inch and then turn around and do half inch on the other side. So those are the two pieces we're going to use for the base. After you mit uh, not miter, uh, burnish your score lines, you're going to attach the 7x9 piece on top, like so. I like to do one at a time. I am going to use the art glitter glue. I used to use the 
score tape all the time but I like the wiggle room that you get with the art glitter glue even though it does dry fast so I'm just gonna put a line of glue this does kind of ooze out on me a little bit this is a brand new bottle and so it comes out really well all right line these up yep I got glue oozing and there we go so I'm going to go ahead and just open that up and make sure that it's attached real well I usually burnish it with my square Teflon I think it is so all right so that's down and then we're going to glue this and we want to make sure that this side lines up nice and neat we might have to do some adjusting once it's down like use our bone folder to kind of make it lay down flat and nice so let's see how well we do with getting these to line up I'm gonna try not to use so much glue that it oozes out this time but can't make any promises and just want to make sure that each of the sides lines up the bottom press down obviously we can't open it now to do the inside but so I don't know if you probably can't tell but there's just a little bit of a bubble and so I like my pages extremely flat so I just take my bone folder and kind of push out to all the ends to make sure that that extra loose is being pushed to the sides and it just makes it lay flatter okay so this is going to be our base page so the um, opening is on the left and the right the left obviously is where it will be attached to the spine or the hinge excuse me so this page is going to have a couple flaps and to get started on that we're going to need two pieces one of them is a five by nine piece and the other one is a four by nine I do think I'm going to round my corners on these, but let's do our scoring first. I'm going to move the base page to the side. So the 5x9 piece you place on your scoreboard with the 5 inches at the top, score at one half inch. Same with the 4x9 piece, you put the 4 inch side up on your scoreboard, score at one half inch. I'm going to round my corners. on both pieces okay so on the base page what this will look like is we're going to have a smaller flap down first and the larger flap will be on top okay now I'm gonna go ahead and place this half inch inside of the opening um, to get rid of some bulk so to do that I am going to miter the corner just so that it goes in nicely and you don't see anything hanging out okay and periodically I'm checking my computer to make sure I'm in frame sometimes it's hard to tell all right, so I'm going to put the glue on the inside of this one, and there is a shadow. Let's see. Let's see if that helps a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and place that on the inside. sure the top and the bottom are lined up and give it a good press now you'll notice it flaps up that's totally fine let me turn off the light let's see if that helps I do this every time I start recording and realize oh bad lighting let's see give it a minute to adjust huh 
It's really bad lighting where I'm at. I think I need the lights back on. Hmm. Yeah, sorry, there's just gonna be a little bit of a shadow. Okay, so now that we have the four by nine adhered, we're gonna take the five by nine. This one half inch will get glue, and then we're just gonna glue it right on top of that flap so that it's like two pages of a book, okay? This one, you don't have to miter those corners if you don't want to, I'm not. And I'm gonna turn it sideways just so it's easier for me to put it on there. I want to make sure I line it up real good. So on three sides, I need to make sure everything's lined up. And it looks like I'm okay. And I'll go ahead and open it and make sure that I burnish it real well. I am using the Artisan Cardstock by Country Craft Creations. It's a linen-based paper, nice uh, thickness, doesn't crack, does have some texture to it because of the linen. All right, so we have one flap, a second flap. Uh, on the inside of this flap, I did want a pocket so that I can put a tag. And so I measured this piece is four and three eighths by four. And because it's going to become a pocket, you score on three sides. So the three sides that you score on, you have this four and three eighths across the top, score it one half on each end, and then turn it so that it's on the four inch side and score it at one half. Okay. So for a pocket, after you do your burnishing, there's a square in the corner that we like to cut out at an angle so that it's not so thick and lays nice. So I just cut at an angle to get that square out. Okay, and so it will look like so. I put the two sides in and then bring up the bottom and that's going to go right here. Um, because I rounded the corners, I am gonna place it a little bit higher. I like that look because then you can see the uh, base paper underneath. So I'm gonna actually bring it up about an inch. You wanna make sure that it does not cross this line. So uh, when you turn it, it closes nice. I did make it the measurement four and three eighths for that reason. So it would give it just a little bit of wiggle room. So you wanna line it up with this outside and then you should be okay. So I'm gonna put glue in on my half inch sides here. Man, a new bottle of glue that comes out fast. I'm used to having to squeeze it like crazy because I want every last drop of it out. I'm kind of a messy gluer. And then I feel like, oh, it didn't get enough on the, I'm always worried about the ends. I want to make sure that I get it real good on the ends. All right, so like I said, about an inch or so up from the bottom, and my goal is to line it up with this left hand side and that looks good you'll notice there's just a hair of space there and that's what we want so that it closes well if you don't round your corners on the flaps you can place your pocket all the way to the bottom but like i said i kind of like seeing the designer paper come out the bottom of my pocket always make sure i got my corners real good Okay, and so there's a place for a tag. Now we do want this to stay closed, and so what we're going to do is put a um, magnetic closure on here. Uh, I'm doing something a little bit different this time than what I've done before. So we're gonna have this come across, and it'll have a magnet on the other side, but I wanted to use this in some way, and so I'm actually gonna put a pocket on top of this so that something can be placed inside. I think that'll add a little bit of interest. So this piece is three by five. Here's my notes, it's kind of messy. Uh, you need a three by five piece, and then the pocket you need a three and a half by five and a half. 
Let's work with the three by five piece first. You place the five inch side up at the top of your scoreboard and you score it one half inch. I am going to put the glue on the inside and tuck it into the opening. I think that helps it lay a little bit flatter. Okay, again, you can round your corners. I think I will. Just because the flaps are rounded, it looks better, more consistent. All right, so let's put some glue on the inside, remember. You don't have to do it on the inside. You forget and put it on top, that's totally fine. I like, I just eyeball it as to where I want it to go. I want to make sure it's all the way on the edge. Press down. Get my burnish it. Okay. Now this will have a magnet and because I am getting up in the years, <laughs> I have a memory that is not as strong as it used to be. So I have to write myself notes so that I don't cover my paper uh, before I put the magnets on. So I'm gonna write myself a note. I'll just put the word mag right here and I'm gonna place the word mag on this flap so that it reminds me before I put my paper down. All right, ooh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Okay, so this was the three and a half by five and a half. Move that to the side. Please place the five and a half across the top. Score it one half on each end. Turn it to the three and a half inch side. Score it one half. I do want to take, uh, I did miter the top by cutting a little snip off each side. I do want to take out the bottom. Now because I rounded my corners, I kind of want to round this pocket on the one side. So we'll see what that looks like in just a second. Just take that out, this corner and this corner. Let me make sure. Okay. All right. So we want this to fit right on top of this closure so that we can use this as a pocket and to do that we're going to have to round the top and the bottom to match this and I should have thought about that before I rounded the corners I don't know how well I'm going to like this but we'll see okay so it'll still work we can still adhere it even though it looks kind of weird So again, I put glue on the sides and I'm going to put glue on the bottom and the other side. I just think also with the glue, it just goes faster than using the score tape. Even though score tape is awesome and I still use it, um, it's just a little bit more time consuming to have to rip off the backing all the time. All right, now the goal is to let it right on top of there so we don't even notice the bottom piece. Okay, and once again, burnish with your uh, bone folder or whatever you use. Okay, so now what will happen, let me get a different color piece of paper we can put something in this closure like so obviously not as tall but and I think that will be cool okay it's a pretty good size pocket so that's nice all right so that's the front page of number one open two pages pocket on here um, and now let's do the back now the back is going to require let's see is this the yeah, this is where it's going to, you're going to need a lot of magnets for the back. But I'm not putting the magnets on right now. I'm just doing the actual base pages. So let's get started with, um, let's see. i got to remember what I did here. I cut everything ahead of time. And then I don't remember what my brain was thinking I was going to do. 
Um, okay, I got it. I just forgot to score something. Okay. You are going to need two pieces that are four by nine. Two pieces at four by nine. You're going to place it on your scoreboard. And I have a special, and there's a certain one I like better to use. And you're going to score, I'm going to score at three and a half, just because sometimes it's easier for me to do it on the right instead of the left. So with the four inches at the top, I'm going to go to the three and a half and score. And I'm going to do that to the other piece also. Four uh, inches across the top. I'm going to score at three and a half. Okay. Everything else I think I scored and it's ready, so we'll see. So we're going to go ahead and burnish where we scored. Again, I look at the camera and realize I'm off out of frame, so I apologize. Uh, I do think I'm going to round the corners on this too, just to make it a little bit more consistent. Just the inside. These are going to become flaps that open. And so let's go ahead and corner round. Oh, it doesn't look. Yeah. Okay. So what's going to happen is we're going to have these two doors and on each of these doors we're going to have two flaps that open so that you can use them as journaling spots or what have you. And so for this you need four, four at three and one fourth by three and a half. You need four of those, three and one fourth by three and a half. And then you're going to want a square that measures three and a half by three and a half. And it's that square that's going to be kind of like your closure and keep the flaps down. So we're going to be using four magnets on this part. So you are going to place the ones that measure three and a fourth by three and a half. The four of them, you're going to place the three and a half inches across the top and score at one half inch. And do that to all four pieces. Okay, I'm going to place my flaps on my score pal so that I can bump them up to the top so I know that they're even. Because I want to place these as close to the same to the same spot as possible. So I'm going to have a flap here. And I again, I did not make my flap all the way to the center. I like to see the paper. And we're going to have a square on top. You'll see in a minute. So I'm thinking I want about an inch from the bottom and the top to place my um, flaps. So I want it in the corner here so I can see my measuring guide on the side. And these are nine inches tall. So I'm going to place my flap at about the bottom of my flap is at eight inches down at the bottom. Okay. So one inch from the bottom is what I liked. And about right there. Make sure it's all the way to the edge. Okay, so that will be a little flap. A little extra glue there. And again, I want it about an inch from the top. So I'm going to put the top of this flap at the one inch mark on the side here. Yep, I like that. And adhere it down. All right, about one inch. So 
remove it, make sure I have it lined up nice along that left hand side. Looks good. Go ahead and open, make sure it's down real good. Okay, so there's our left hand door. Now we wanna do the same thing to the right hand door. And I want them to line up as close to the same as possible. So I'm gonna leave this close by, and even though I know it's an inch, I still wanna have the visual here. So taking my other two flaps, and we wanna go up an inch from the bottom. So the bottom should be at eight inches. Make sure it's all the way to the left. And let me just see if that, yep, looks pretty close to the other one. That's the goal. And I open it and make sure it's down real good. And this will be covered with decorative paper. And now we have one more. Okay, so place this at one inch down. Oop, moved on me. Looks good. Okay. Now, when you take a look at this and the flaps keep flapping up, we want those to stay down. So I'm gonna use this as my stopper or the, my, um, kind of like my closure for the flaps. So this is gonna stay flat. You do not have to score it at all, but it will have four magnets. So once again, because of my memory, uh, I'm going to mark where the magnets should go so I don't cover it with the designer paper so I'm gonna eyeball this and just write myself a note that there'll be a magnet on each corner. So there's gonna be a magnet about here on the flap. I'm gonna write magnet in all four corners because we're gonna end up covering the front and the back with the Dame paper collection. Okay, so I wrote mag on all four corners and I'm gonna write mag on the four corners of the flaps. And if I miss that while I'm covering, then I need to have my eyes checked, okay? So um, let me bring back the base page and we're going to adhere these flaps down. Okay, I'm going to turn it sideways just to make sure that I can line it up easier. So the opening is facing me, the opening that's going to be attached to the um, hinge. Make sure you have it lined up top and bottom. And that looks about right. So I'm gonna open it up. Door number two. These should be right, these doors or these flaps should touch because it's seven inches across and each of these measure then about three and a half once we did our folding. All right, so again, there's an opening facing me and I'm gonna place this right on the edge, making sure it lines up. And looks right. Make sure it's down. Okay. So 
So that will stay closed or the flaps will stay closed with this. And the weight of the paper will bring these pages down too once I keep adding layers of decorative paper. So um, these flaps should stay down. If they don't, I can always add magnets. So, okay, so I'm gonna not, I don't wanna lose this square, so I'm gonna put that off to the side. Um, as you open then these two flaps, we have a large area to work with and I wanted a double pocket. So you need two pieces of paper for a double pocket and those measurements are, one of them is at four and a half by eight and you need one at three and a half by eight. So go ahead and freeze or write those down, four and a half by eight and three and a half by eight. Okay, you're going to place the three and a half by eight inch piece on your scoreboard with the eight inches going across the top, measure or score one half inch on each end. And here's what I want you to do. <laughs> You're gonna turn it so that the three and a half inch side is across the top. And I want you to measure over one inch on that half inch flap and just put a little indentation just on the half inch part. And I want you to do the same thing to the other side. So put the three and a half inches at the top and this time I worked backwards. So I went down and I'm gonna put a little mark at two and a half. So let's see if you can see that in the camera. And that's just gonna help me when it comes to doing some cutting. So I know that there's a one inch little box that I'll be cutting off. The other piece that was four and a half by eight, you need to place the eight inch side at the top of your scoring board and do one half inch on each side. Turn it so that your four and a half inches is at the top and score at one half inch. You're gonna burnish where you scored. The corners wanna come out and so we cut the square out at an angle. Some people just cut straight across. I'm always afraid I'm gonna to cut too much. So I always just make two snips, half inch on each side of the corner. I don't trust myself to do the straight across. Okay, so this is gonna be at the bottom and then we wanna have a pocket that slides inside so that we can place large pieces in it. So what I want you to do is that piece that measured three and a half by eight where we put the little tick marks for the scores what we're gonna do is we're going to cut as close, as straight as we can on that so that it comes up. I'm gonna do the other side too. Go straight across on that little score mark. So this one inch piece, I'm now gonna cut at an angle to take it off. Okay. And I'm going to cut this at an angle to take it off. Okay, so that's what it'll look like. And that's so we can slide down into the other pocket. So let's take care of that on our base page. So let me bring it back over. Make sure I have it go in the right direction. The last thing I need is to put the pocket on upside down. Okay. So in with your flaps open, you're going to take the one that you scored on three sides to make a pocket. That's gonna go down here at the bottom. And you wanna try and center it so that each door still closes. So see if you've got it in the right section, the right part of your page so that both pages come down and you don't want it to go over that score line right here. So let's get our adhesive on. Oh, I always go off. Okay. I'm gonna tuck the two sides in, then bring up the bottom. You want to line it up at the bottom and make sure you're not going over those side score lines. So I'm going to real quick see, yep, it's good. 
And now I can press down with my bone folder. We want our book as flat as it can be. So I give it a good push. Now, depending on what paper you have, you gotta be careful. This linen paper is tough as nails, so I can really get in there and do some burnishing. Okay, so see, mine closes just right. There's no um, bumping into that paper. Okay, so now we're going to place this right here on top of it. So the reason for doing it like this is so that our pocket goes all the way down. We can put a very large mat in here. We don't want it to be closed off on the bottom, but yet we want to hide. We don't want to see any extra paper that we shouldn't see. Okay. And we've got to make sure that we can close it fine. Yep. Measurements are good. So the only place you're going to put adhesive are the two sides, the two uh, half inch flaps. We slide this down into the pocket until it meets on the sides. Yep. And then now we can make sure that we burnish real well. Okay, and then that's real nice because you can put a long piece of paper all the way down. Okay, and that is page style number one. I'm leaving these empty. Um, once I put the magnet square on here like so, I'm hoping that will keep the pages down. If not, um, maybe I, sh I think I'll write myself a little note to maybe put a magnet here and st just to make sure, I gotta check it. Okay. So I don't want flappy doors opening. Okay, on to the next page style. So we're ready for page style number two. So you should have your base, oops, your base piece already made. So it's seven by nine. It's got the openings on each side. All right, let's take a look and see what we need to do here. Page two you're going to need two pieces at four by three and a half and one that is three by four and a half. Okay. You're gonna take the two that are four by three and a half. You're gonna place the three and a half inch side along the top of your scoreboard, score at one half. So that's on both of those that measure three and a half by uh, four. Three and a half goes across the top, score at one half. Okay. The one that measures three by four and a half, you're going to place the four and a half inch side at the top, score at one half. Okay. You're going to place these on the page on the left hand side where the opening is, and you're going to have two, one at the top, one at the bottom that fold up and one that folds down. And this one actually will open to the left. Or do we want to put them on this side so that when this opens, it opens over here. I guess you can pick if you want left or right. Um, I think I might actually put it on the left hand side now that I look at it. So what's going to happen to keep these closed, I'm going to put a hole, use my paper, uh, my hole punch, punch a hole on the top one and the bottom one, and I'll string a ribbon through there, and that's how I'll keep these all down. Okay, 
So the ones that were the same measurement, one goes at the top, one goes at the bottom. I did draw a little circle on there to remind myself, don't forget to punch a hole. Once, but I punched the hole this time um, once the designer paper's on there. All right, so I'm gonna actually put them on the right-hand side. I thought I was gonna do the left, but I changed my other mind. Make sure it's lined up. And once you're happy with it, go ahead and burnish it down. I'll do the top one next. Hope I'm in camera. I'm gonna turn it upside down just because it's easier for me. And make sure it's lined up. It's looking good. Okay, and now this one goes right in between. And if you've measured correctly, they should all be right touching one another like so. Okay, and I'll have this so that it opens to the right. I'm gonna turn this sideways so it's easier for me to work with. I'm gonna push these two sides down so I can see where I need to place this exactly right. And it looks like right, right here. Okay. So again, there'll be a ribbon. I'll use seam binding to tie something, but, uh, through a hole here and a hole here. There will be no hole in this middle piece. And that's all we do for the fr uh, front of page two. Okay, and I'm gonna flip it over onto the back. Now on this one, you're gonna notice an extra score line. I did not wanna waste the paper, so I'm gonna make it work, but ignore it when you see it. So we want a sheet of paper that is nine by 12. You'll place it with the 12 inches at the top. Okay. And go ahead and score at one half of an inch, one half, and then make a second score at seven. So ignore this one that you see right here. This was my original one and it didn't work out. I didn't like the way it, it wasn't folding nice. So it wasn't playing nice. So I'm trying to get rid of it. So half inch and seven inches. Go ahead and burnish on the score lines. Bring your base page back over. We're going to attach this um, half inch on the right hand side. And I think I'm going to actually attach it so that this goes inside the opening. So I'm gonna clip my edges. I'm gonna miter those corners because it works better that way and I will stick it inside of the opening. Maybe, can't get my, there we go. I'm gonna place it on the inside. Why am I having such a hard time opening this thing? I got it so flat when I was burnishing that it doesn't wanna, it's hard to see. Okay, so we're gonna glue it so that it is like so. Whew, hope I can do it without making a big deal out of it. I don't know why I couldn't get it in there to show you. Okay, glue on the inside of the half inch flap. Okay. I'm going to turn it sideways. So I'm inserting it on the right hand side. Man, this is so flat and lined up so well that it's hard for me to... See. Okay, i got to focus here. Oh, see that was a piece of cake. Make sure that it's in all the way, but yet still able to fold. Press down. All right. I am. Next. So when you open this flap, 
it will also open one more time so that you have like a trifold. Ignore this score line. You do not want it. I'm gonna hope, I hope I can hide it when I put the designer paper on. So I wanted a pocket here. And so you're going to cut this to, um, actually, you can have the pocket here or on the inside. I originally had it for this one and I cut it down. Um, let's see, what did I end up cutting this to? I think I did seven and three eighths. Okay, so I did change a measurement. So uh, for the pocket, you want a, one that's four by seven and three eighths. We're going to score it by placing the seven and three eighths side at the top, half inch on each side. Turn it so that the four inches is at the top, half inch on the side. Let's go ahead and make it a pocket by cutting out the corners at an angle. Okay, bring back the base page, open the flap, and it's going to go, I'm going to put mine right here. Ooh, that doesn't look like it's in very nice. I could have got that in farther. Um, and put glue and we want to make sure that the doors, the flaps close okay, that we don't have any overhang on, on the score line. Ugh. Okay, push the two sides in, bring the bottom up, center it between the two score lines. Make sure, yep, everything closes without any buckling. And give it a good burnish. And that's all we're doing for base page two, okay? And I'm not putting any magnets here. I think it's going to close fine because of the size of the flap. Okay, page two, done. Moving right along. Now we're ready for page three. Here is my base page. You got to have one of those. The next thing, let me turn my notes to the right page. Page three. Uh, give me a second. I'm trying to think of what I wanted to do on this page. That's the one bad thing of having everything cut ahead of time. Now I don't remember. Page three. Flip to score five and three seconds. Nope, that was page two that I did that. Ah, uh, let me think. What am I doing? I have all these pieces cut and I don't know what my brain was thinking. I should draw pictures. Uh, I'll figure it out as we go. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, yes, I do remember. Okay, got it. Okay, um, you are going to need a piece that measures 8.5 by 12. Just one. And you're going to place... the 12 inches across the top. And you're going to score it one half inch then I flipped it over half inches still on the left and I scored at six and one fourth. Let me see if that's right. Yep. Is that right? Because we want it to fold in half. Hold on. Sorry, I should have been more prepared. I don't know why I can't figure this out. That was the eight and a half by 12, half inch. Oh, I know. I just moved it this way and did five and three fourths. I was looking at the scoreboard numbers and I'm like, wait a minute, that doesn't line up. Okay, so here's what you need to do. Half inch with the 12, uh, 12 inches across the top, half inch. Then I flipped my paper upside down, turned it over and I did five and three fourths. Okay, 
I'm not making it harder than it needs to be. Go ahead and you're going to have, this is going to be done a little bit differently because you're going to attach, you're going to be doing some gluing. This is going to become an L pocket where you can store things in. So if I look at my base page, this is going to be glued on top. Okay. So you want the half inch going to the back so that it opens up like so. Can you see that? Um, but I want this to be closed on the left hand side and the bottom. So I'm going to place a thin line of glue along the bottom and along this side where the right near the half inch. And I'm going to close it so that it lines up. I hope that was clear. <laughs> clear as mud. Okay, um, let's see. Maybe once I get it done, I'll sh I can show it to you better in the camera. Oop. I didn't get it down good enough. Okay, so this is now sealed on the left and at the bottom. The flap goes towards the back. And now I want this to become an L pocket, so I want to cut a diagonal piece off, like a triangle. So this is kind of by preference, like what you like. I kind of like my L pocket to go about two inches over, and yet I like to have a longer piece, longer opening. So I'm going to mark at two inches and then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to mark it I kind of um, five maybe yeah let's go five so this was two and this is five up starting down here go up five that's a lie starting up here go down mark five because you want to cut a piece off two inches, five. Okay, got it. Now I'm going to take it to my cutter and I'm just going to connect. I'm going to line it up on my cutter so I can cut this piece off. Now some people like to use a ruler and connect those two lines like so. Draw a line so they can see it, but I can see the two tick marks on my cutter so I don't need to do that. So let me get mine cut. So that's what mine looks like. I'm going to attach this to the left hand side. So this becomes like a separate page and you can use it to store stuff. Okay, there's it opens and you can use it. I'm going to turn my base page sideways so that I can see it better as I glue it down. up at the edge and the bottom. It's a little bit shorter. I did that on purpose. Okay. And I want to make sure that it's down real good. So now we have an extra storage space that you can put some things in. Um, I think that's all for the, I think I left this blank for large photo mats. 
Or did I? Hold on, I gotta think again. I'm telling you, I'm losing it. Uh, these I got. Oh, it was the back I left empty. Let me make sure. Page three, back plane. Okay, so what I did was. Uh, I'm going to leave the front empty. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do here. So turn it over onto the back. You're probably like, oh, does she know what she's doing? Well, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Okay, um, four and a half by eight. You need one of those. And ignore this. We're putting it on the back, not the front. Four and a half by eight. You're going to place the eight inches at the top. Score it one half inch on each side. Turn it so that four and a half inches is across the top. Score it at one half inch. This will become a pocket. You're going to need two pieces at three and a half by five and a half, and two pieces that measure two and a half by three and a half. Okay. So we're going to place the, this is uh, the three and a half by five and a half inch piece. Place the five and a half inches across the top, score it one half. Do that with both pieces. Okay. Now the pieces that we cut that are two and a half by three and a half, I am going to end up making a frame where I cut out the center and put a piece of acetate so that you can put tuck something inside and you'll have that acetate window. So I will show you that in just a second. Let's do everything else first and then I'll get to the acetate frame. So these are going to go at the top. Okay, the ones that measured five, three and a half by five and a half and that we scored at one half. And again, I am going to kind of move this upside down so I can see what I'm doing better. Okay, and we want to place the other one right next to it. Now, lay it down to see if it lays nice and flat and doesn't have any overhang. Make sure everything lines up. And I think I'm going to be able to make that work. Okay. And we're going to glue that down right next to it. Okay. So these will flap up. So then we're going to take a the one that we scored on three sides, take out our bottom corners, the squares at an angle. And we're going to place that pocket down here at the bottom. Okay. Now We'll be able to keep these flaps down because we can put something inside of that pocket and it will act as a closure. And get the glue down here. Get the glue. Okay, and tuck your two sides in, bring the bottom up, place it at the bottom, making sure everything lines up, bottom and two sides, and burnish.
Okay. I'm going to move this to the side. And now what I want to do is I want to uh, cut a square rectangle out of the center. So what I think I'm going to do is give myself mm, about a 3 8 of an inch border. Uh, no. Uh, let's go... Hmm. One eighth. No. One fourth. Let me take a peek here. Right, yeah, I'm going to do a three eighths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw three eighths border on all four sides and then I'm going to cut that out using my exacto knife. To put the acetate pocket window thingamabob on the page we just made, I want them to be like just kind of an interest piece and I can put something underneath or slide in them. So what I did was I just cut out a rectangle from the center. I measured a 3 8 inch border all along the side and cut out the center with my X-Acto knife. And I did that on both of them so that they both will have these little acetate windows right here. So once I have these cut out, I went ahead and measured a piece of acetate that will fit behind that I'm going to attach. And so what I did was I put score tape on the back side of my frame and I'm going to just lay this down so that the lines go straight like so. So let me take this backing off. And we'll have to go back and cover the front with the designer paper when we're done. We can't attach these yet because we have to wait until we decorate the or add the paper because you want to see paper behind this. Okay so I want to make sure my lines are straight. I need to pick this up and look at it. Okay and looks pretty good so I'm just going to push down where I had that score tape okay so does that make sense what I'm trying to do here so then this will go here and I'll only glue it on three sides so you'll see the, de the d dame collection paper here and so you'll be able to see that through the window and I'll just stick a skinny tag or something of interest um, out the top so let's do the other one. I've already put the score tape on. Just need to take off the backing. My hands are getting totally gluey. And let's look at it to make sure we get the line straight. Looks about right. And push down. Okay, and there's our second one. So I'm going to move those to the side. And we have one last page to do. This is a four page book. And you already have your base made. On the front, we are going to have a waterfall. And so to make water, my, the what way I do it is I have a base piece and this helps me keep, some, keep them lined up and I use my scoreboard to help me keep them lined up. Um, but this is, um, what is this, four and a half by eight. So you need one that's four and a half by eight. And then I did nine sheets that were four and a half by four. I ended up with nine of these. But when you lay it on here, it's gonna look like there's 10. So anyway, okay, now when you, and you're going to need one that is two by six and a half. So you're going to place the six and a half inch side down, score it one half. And I might end up rounding these corners, I don't know yet. So for the four and a half by four, 
you're going to place the 4 inch side along the top, score it a half. It's the 4 inch side that goes to the top. Okay. So what I do is I place my 4 by 8 sheet. I'm going to move this. Okay. And this helps me keep everything lined up because I can push it to the side. Okay, like so. So what you do, and I'm sure some of you are already familiar with this, but for those of you who are not, you're going to place your glue on the first half inch flap, and you're going to place it at the very top of this 4x8 sheet. And so I use the scoreboard to help me get that lined up as square as possible. So I'm going to open it up, make sure it's down good. Okay, and there's our first flap. So now, every time you put a flap on, you're going to bump it up to the half inch that's already down. So this will bump up right next underneath that one. Okay, so I'm going to place this back in my scoreboard so that I've got the guide on the side. Okay. And I'm going to bump that right up. You can feel it when you're putting it down. Like it won't go. I hope I got that right. Okay. Now I'm going to keep these up just so it's easier for me to place the other ones. And now it's just a matter of rocking and rolling and getting it done. Okay. So every once in a while I look at it to make sure I'm not going off, that everything is still even. Next one, again, bump it up. You can feel that ridge from that half inch on the previous flap. And keep going. couple left. Okay, more than a couple. Now I'm probably going to attach this after I have put my designer paper down because I want to be able to see. It's not as white as the page itself, so I want to see the other paper behind it. So I'll show you in a minute, but sometimes I get ahead of myself and I try and attach everything, but Sometimes you have to hold off on some of those pieces. And I keep making sure that I am pushing it down real good. Looks like I have two left. Hope I'm not going crooked. Even with the using the scoreboard, sometimes it just happens. I don't get it. Sometimes it's hard to keep these lined up as nice and neat as you want to, but we notice our mistakes more than anybody else. I think if somebody's looking at your album and the pictures that you've put in and the last thing they're going to notice is, hmm, I think this is off just a hair. And if they do say that or notice, then they're not really your friend. I'm just kidding.
Okay. And let me push that down. So in the moment of truth, I'm going to push all these down, and I hope they line up nice. Ta-da! Okay, so look at everything lined up perfectly if you have a scoreboard. I think that's the trick, really, just to line it up in the corner. Okay, so what I mean by attaching it later is I'm going to actually center this on this page. And so I want to see the paper, obviously, around the outside edge. So I'm going to wait to adhere it until um, that is matted. But I am going to attach my closure because I'll forget if I don't. And I'm also going to write the word magnet. Or do I want it at the bottom? Maybe I want more at the top. I don't know. We'll see when I'm ready to attach it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and attach. I'm going to eyeball the center. That's where I want this. And my paper is seven inches. So I'm going to shoot for getting it close to the center at the three and a half inch mark. And I think I can live with it if it's a centimeter. Or not a, yeah, about a millimeter off. Not a centimeter. That would be very noticeable. Okay. Again, write myself a note that I'm going to need a magnet before I cover this one. And I'm going to open up this and write magnet right here so I don't forget. Okay, and then this page will be done once. The reason why I think I might put it closer to the bottom is so that the magnet. Uh, yeah, I kind of like it closer to the bottom. Okay, so that's what the front page will look like. So now we just have one more base page to do, or the back of it, and then we are ready to decorate. Now, I do not show matting on camera. I think that's totally boring to watch people glue the decorative paper on. Um, so I always say that I just measure my paper uh, and about an eighth. Some people like an eighth. Some people like a fourth. Some people like a half. I do usually about an eighth of an inch smaller than the actual page. Um, depends if you like that border. Sometimes I do a fourth, so we'll just see what I feel like this time. But last page before my rant is done. Um, you're going to need two that measure four by nine. And I am going to go ahead and round those corners on one side, on the long side. Ooh, that didn't go wrong. Okay. I'm going to place... The four inches across the top score at one half inch. Same way with the other one, four inches at the top, half inch. I am going to corner round. Okay. I drew myself a little circle here. That's going to stand for a hole punch because, again, these are, are going to be doors that open like so. And to keep them closed, I'm going to go ahead and string put some seam binding in the holes and tie a bow so that's that and then you need two more pieces and those are five by seven two at five by seven you're going to place the five inches at the top score it a half inch on both of them five inches along the top half inch uh, i'm going to corner around those and I might end up doing some others. You know, I might even go back to my waterfall and round those corners. I don't know yet. I do like the look of a rounded corner. I just think it looks a little bit more... I don't know. I just like the look of it better. Okay. So let me get some of my mess cleaned up. So bring back your base page. This is going to go, oh, we have to do the side flaps first. Ooh, I almost screwed up. We have to do these first, okay, the long doors. So let's attach these on each side, one on the left, one on the right. Make sure you put these on first. 
Okay, I'm going to turn it sideways so it's easier for me to see. So I have an opening towards me. And line it up as straight as you can, as even with the top, bottom, and side here. And bravo, it's good. Push, burnish, get rid of extra glue that seeps out. Okay, and now the next one. Again, I'm going to turn it sideways and I'm going to attach this one. Line it up. Make sure top and bottom looks good. Open the door, give it a good burnish, and there we go. Okay, and so now you can attach the inside flaps. Now remember, we're going to have a hole here and a hole here that we'll have seam binding to keep this closed. When we open it, we're going to have a page that goes up and a page that comes down. So it's just a matter of attaching one on the top and one on the bottom. And then that's going to be it for the base pages because we can't put the waterfall in yet. Most of the waterfall is obviously put together, but okay. Now we want to make sure, Ooh, that looks pretty, I don't, Ooh. okay. So I won't be able to close my doors. Mine are a hair too long. So I'm going to have to trim. So make sure you check. So let me show you. When I put this down, it kind of, it's going to bunch. It hits the store. So I'm going to take about just a hair, like an eighth of an inch. So it, what, it did measure seven. I'm going to go six. Uh, let's go six and seven eighths. Okay. So instead of seven, I did six and seven eighths. So let me change that. And that's so that the doors close. Okay. Now I got to go back and fix my rounded corner now that I trimmed it. And let's see how that fits instead. That's much better. Okay. So let me attach this one and then I'll go back and trim that other one. I got glue on it, so it's going to be messy. All right, line it up at the bottom and make sure it doesn't cross any score lines that the doors will be able to close nice and neat. Close, close, good, okay. Let me fix this next one. Let me see if I can wipe this glue off with a wet wipe. Should have had a dry one ready. Okay. All right, let me get a Kleenex and dry it off. I want to cut it without getting any glue on my cutter. That would not be cool. Okay, let me give it a try. So again, six and seven eighths is what I'm trimming it to. Okay. Got to fix that corner that I rounded. I'm going to turn this upside down. And now I can adhere the glue again. Make sure it goes to the bottom, but don't cross. Make sure you can close. Good. All right, I'm glad I got that. And then you'll have a big open space. Now, a lot of times people put loose uh, mats in here, and then it will just stay in there when this is closed with the seam binding. 
So you can do individual pictures. You can actually adhere things. So um, I am about ready to do my matting. So I am going to turn off the camera and start my matting. And then I, and actually, no, before I do my matting, see, I got to think out loud or else I screw up. Um, I'm going to start putting some magnets down. Okay, so I have marked where I need magnets, so I'm going to go back. Okay, do I round this or not? These are rounded. Look at, I'm starting to have ADHD. I can't stay focused. Um, I kind of dig the rounded. Uh, yeah, I'm going to round it. So let's do that real quick. I think it looks better. Totally. Yep, good call. It takes just a second to do so, and I think it's worth it. And we're even going to do it on the bottom base page. Uh, let me see when I get there. Maybe I won't. And let's see, here's the last page I attached. Okay, so now do I need, um, I think I'm going to keep the bottom one straight and that'll just help me, uh, it'll flush more with the page. So the base piece, do not round the corner if you're choosing to round. Um, I'm just going to show you, um, for those of you who may not be as experienced, I'm going to show you how to attach the magnets. I mean, it's not rocket science or anything, but I just want to show you one because you want to do it before you add your paper because you want to hide the magnet. You don't want to see that ugly thing sticking out. Uh, this is easier if you do it ahead of time. I mean, it's not like it's hard, but it's just kind of cumbersome. And almost done. And the final one. Okay, so let's take a look. Doesn't that look better, don't you think? I do. Okay, so I'm going to move. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do the magnet just by doing it on this page and then wherever we wrote magnets before you can go back and add your magnets so you'll need a set now mine um, do not have adhesive on the back if you want a good magnet get the basic gray ones from the country craft creations online store um, i did not have any of those on hand i'm going to round this too Okay, so I need to know about where I'm going to place this waterfall. And I'm going to go up just about. Okay, so I'm going to place some score tape on the back of my magnet, on both of the magnets. And I am, you know what, I have 3 8 inch, let me use that. Show you in just a second. Okay, so I just put a piece of score tape on each side and I'm going to take one of the sides off the backing of the tape and I'm going to place it on my flap push sorry so I adhered it here on the flap pushing it down and now I'm going to take off the backing of that one and I need to make sure I put it in the right spot Nope. 
Okay, I should probably wait to do this until it's attached, but I'm just trying to show you what I do. Okay, so then I just push down because the adhesive back is going to attach to the other paper. And then I just kind of put my, open it slowly, there we go. And I then place, I don't want the magnet to move, and so I'm just going to put some score tape on top of it to kind of help keep it in place. Okay. Okay, so that's how I do it. And then I would put my decorative paper on. Okay. Okay, so I will be back after I attach my magnets and my um, decorative paper and I'll give you some last minute things for the cover. I haven't decided how I'm going to do the cover yet. Um, it, I, want, I always do the same kind, so i got to think outside the box a little bit. Okay, I will be back. Here's a look at my pages before I do the embellishing, but I do have the, um, all the paper on. Um, on this front one that has that pocket for the closure, I just need to make a tag to put inside, but I loved this uh, card, but it was just a little bit too short for the size that I had put this on. So I just took another piece of paper and put it underneath. Um, I'll probably put some sort of pearls right here to kind of divide them or something to kind of split it up a little bit. Uh, I'm looking forward to embellishing. I'm going to have thicker gussets so that I can put more stuff in and with only four pages it makes it easier to do that. So when you open it, um, I have another card on the other side that was from the cut aparts. Again, I wanted to, I had to add the extra pink. This has the double page and then here's for a po uh, tag to go into a pocket. The back, um, I ended up doing it a little bit different. My magnet was so strong right here it was one of the basic grays the bigger ones that I only needed one magnet on this square and I put it in the center and it keeps it closed just with that one so that saved me a lot of magnets so then each of these flips open and you can either do journaling or add pictures or something and then the this opens and you have two pockets here. Remember, this one's real long. Can, I'm gonna have a real big mat uh, board there. So there's plenty of room to decorate that one and add some pretty embellishments. This will be my first page. My second page is gonna be this one. Um, here's the acetate windows. I'm trying to decide, it's kind of a narrow window, so I'm gonna have to put something somewhat small in there. Um, but I think it'll look cute once I have something in there. Even this, I think, is a little bit too... Well, maybe not. I might, Or I could just put some sort of picture in there, too. I don't know. I'll see what I have. Um, so this is a pocket. So to keep these from flapping all the time, I will have a mat board or, you know, a, like a tag in here, and that will keep these closed. But this flaps open, and then this is just the pocket down here. And then on the other side, remember we added this, looks like another page. Um, this will be fun to embellish, to add something real eye-catching here in the center. Uh, I might even have something come off the side here. And then this page is plain. I thought this would be a good one just for writing on the white space. So that's my second page. The third page, I went ahead and put the holes in with my crocodile and I added the little gold, I was going to say brads, but uh, they're not called brads. The gold um, thingies. I can't remember what they're called. So this one goes up, down, and to the side. And I put that card on there. She believed she could, so she did. And then this is just a nice plain spot. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to put like individual mats here so that when you open it, you have room for two pictures. I don't know yet. Um, on the other side, we have a large area to work with. I might put some matte um, paper here. It opens once, and then it opens a second time. This is a pocket. I, this is my all-time favorite pa paper, I think. This one and this one, actually. So that'll be my page three. My page four is the flip here. So there's one. I left the backs empty. So one, two, three four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, and then the bottom. And um, have the magnet closure. And then on the back, I went ahead and punched my two holes and put the thingies that I can't remember the name of <laughs> on each of the doors uh, that I'm going to put seam binding in. So this opens. These are each a pocket. Um, I accidentally cut the paper the wrong width. So I had to put some paper there to cover and I'll put something fancy there to, I don't know, um, ribbon or something. And then that goes down and that one goes up. Okay. So there's really, and I think I'm going to put mats in here and then th this will just keep them in and it'll, it'll keep them closed. So that's the four pages, uh, what they look like with the paper. Uh, now it's time to embellish and then I still am thinking of what I can do for the cover. Um, but stay tuned and I'll show you what each page looks like after I embellish. I've decorated my pages and so I'm ready to make the cover. Uh, I always decorate my pages before I put them into the album. I'm going to show you how I decorated them. Um, I had one area that was kind of an issue, but you'll see it when we get there. So this will be my front page and here's the, um, remember this closure is also a pocket and so I made a card and put in there. Um, I put a sticker on some paper and only glued it on the bottom so I could put a little tag inside of there and then I tucked this laser cut tag so I could tuck it in. So this will open and I put a pocket, this is plain for pictures, a pocket um, with some lace and I made a tag and then this I just glued some ribbon and I put a little bit of glue in the center so it could hold a card, the two, um, two cut aparts and I have a paper clip there to help keep things down. And then this um, is from the punch outs. On the back of this one, this is the page that gave me some grief. You know, I ended up using one magnet, but then by the time I put calling cards or the cut aparts in, the magnet doesn't want to reach all the way through. So here was my fix. I don't know how much I like it, but um, these flap out and then I have lace on the inside and here's that seam binding. Um, but see, because of these, um, the magnet doesn't want to, it's hard for the magnet to be as strong. So I'll see if I can come up with something else. But for right now, that was my solution was to keep those flaps down uh, was the seam binding. So that will be my page one, I think. Uh, here's my page two. I put some lace and some flowers. Um, this is the acetate and I, for right now I just made a little tag that comes out. I don't know if I'll end up putting a picture because a lot of school pictures, you know, are kind of small like this. This is holding the doors shut. Um, th these flap up and then I have a large mat in here. So when um, I left these open in case I wanted to tuck something underneath. And then, like I said, to keep the doors closed, this is what the tag is for. And on the other side, here's my pocket. And I need to make a, I need to make something to put in here. Um, I should have done that ahead of time. And then on the other side, I left it flat because I didn't, I want it to close nice. And then left this plain. So that's my page two. Here's page three. I um, just put some paper down and another piece and left it open on the top. Put just a plain tag in uh, with my bow at all. I made a bow. Um, put some appliques down here. When I open it, this is for the pictures on the left. These are real sparkly. I love them. Um, glued two cards together, leaving the tops open so I could make put cards behind them. And then um, pocket with some cards and I put a little bit of lace and an applique over here on the right. Um, on this side have some lace buttons on the corners. Um, the seam binding here keeps this closed so this lifts up down and out. So I'll put that back together in a minute. And then the last page, more of that, I really like that pink lace. 
and then I have little doilies in the corner that I trimmed and seam binding to keep it closed. This is from the uh, punch outs, both of these. Um, took one of the cut aparts, cut it in half so that I could put half on the bottom and half on the top. When you open it, I just laid two cards down from the paper collection and that's that. On the other side is the waterfall. Put just a real big huge bling here um, and there's nothing really I wanted to decorate this with. It's just because I'm going to save it for pictures so I didn't want to have anything get in the way. So those are my four pages and so now it is time to make the cover and I was going to do a different cover but the truth is I just like your typical book uh, cover. So that's what I'm going to do. So to uh, make that I made the paper, you need two sheets of 12 by 12 but you cut them down to 11 and a half by 12 and then you can cut off the extra at the end when we're done but I've already um, cut them 11 and a half by 12 and actually this one's a uh, closer to 11 and a half by 11 because I screwed up something and so um, I'm going I put tape score tape on each end and I'm going to overlap them like so okay and you want to get them as straight as you can when I put the seam binding or not the seam binding the score tape down I did take my um, burnishing tool and really you know make sure it's on there real well but I put tape on both sides some people just put it on the one piece but I think it gives it a much it's more strong if you do too so you just take the backing off and I'm going to use the grid to help me line things up and keep it straight okay and just rub or take your burnishing tool okay now the pieces of chipboard I ended up going with a three and a half inch spine so this is three and a half by nine and a half you just need one of those three and a half by nine and a half and that's going to be your, like I said the spine and then you need two pieces that are seven and a half by nine and a half and you put score tape on them and I didn't put it on every little inch I mean you want a good coverage but it doesn't have to be crazy and so you're going to lay these down and we're going to adhere them and leave a little space here I'm going to use score tape to help me do that I'll be mitering my corners um, I've made these plenty of times on my other uh, videos so I might go a little bit faster on this one I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to eyeball this one instead of scoring an inch I have an inch at the top and an inch at the bottom um, and an inch at the side so what I'm going to do first is the left hand side line it up on my grid and I'm just going to take off all the backing of my score tape and I'm going to line it up as straight as I can and some you know a lot of times I score the paper so I can see the one inch border but I'm going to eyeball it this time I think I can do it and so this is the long part is just taking off the backing that's why the full sheets that are sold at the store are really nice it's better coverage and it's faster but this will work too all right some people use the art glitter glue for this part also I haven't tried that yet I still pretty much am a score tape girl when it comes to the cover oh my gosh okay got it all right so I'm going to eyeball this like I said I'm using my grid as a guide because I do want a one inch at the top one inch at the bottom and I do want one inch on the side okay so this is what I'm gonna do and that looks pretty straight so I'm gonna put this down and push down real hard to make sure that it adheres to my paper fine I didn't write down the measurements on this but again this was seven and a half by nine and a half so I am going to use uh, you know what I'm out of let me see let me see if I have any one fourth inch score tape uh, 
Yes, I have one fourth inch score tape. So I use this as a spacer uh, in between my pieces of chipboard. So I'm just going to lay this down as close to the chipboard piece as possible. And so now that's a guide for where to place this next piece, the spine. Again, trying to get as even as possible without having to measure. I eyeball measure. That'll work. And then the only other thing I need to show you then is how do I make the binding, uh, the hinge. And I have other videos, again, that show that, but I'll try and do it quickly so it doesn't bore anybody who already knows how. Or I guess you can fast forward, too. Okay. So, line it right up against there. And that looks pretty good. This again was three and a half by nine and a half. The pages are seven by nine, so I went a half inch larger on the cover. I'm gonna scoot this down so hopefully you can see, and I'm in camera for the next piece. Uh, for some reason, I feel like it's not as. Maybe that's a little bit better. Okay, uh, one fourth inch again on this side. Now, the seam for the paper is right here. It's not where the paper or the book is going to bend, which is what you want. You don't want it to bend where you have your seam. And now we just have the last piece to put on. I think I put more tape on this one than the other one, so this one might take a little bit longer here. A lot of people use a tool to take the backing off. I can usually get it off with my nails. Sometimes I have to go with a hook of some sort to get it off, but all right. I say that and then I get a little have an issue here. I had two little pieces and I just stuck them here instead of throwing them away. They were extra. All right. And uh, one more. Come on. There we go. Okay. So let's line that up right next to that score tape. Oh. And this also, by having that space, I hear I've always done it this way. But some people get cracks, and so by leaving that one fourth inch, you don't usually get that. So you can see that I have a little bit of extra on this side, so I will be trimming this off. Um, I'm just going to do that real quick. still not an inch but it'll work so it's more like an inch and a half on this side no worries it'll be fine all right I have a mess to clean up real quick I have a feeling this video is a little bit longer all right so I'm going to um, I bought this new or well, I got this mat new for Christmas and I went and used the my cutter and it did leave a mark in it which kind of disappointed me so I'm going to place a different cutting board underneath just so that it's protecting my work surface so I have this handy dandy tool 
that you put this on the corner and then you get perfectly mitered corners. So you have just the right amount on the on each end. It's made of it's a metal, it's not. So this is a little bit longer. That's not straight, but it'll be all right. When you have an inch instead of an inch and a half, it's much easier to trim. And the last corner. Okay, so I have mitered my four corners. Put away my mess. And this is what the tool looks like. Okay. All right, so now I want the paper to have a memory. And so I'm going to lift it up and fold it around. See how I'm bringing it up? No, you're probably not. See, I'm bending it so that it folds nicer. And I'm going to do that on all four sides. And I'll also take my tool here and give it a good score, burnish, whatever. I get the two words. I interchange them all the time. And I stand it up, bend it over. I do my long sides first. Um, I am going to put some uh, score tape around the perimeter of the chipboard and the perimeter of the paper to so get a good hold. Again, some people just put it on the paper. I want to make sure that this isn't going anywhere with all this work you put into it. It's better to add a little bit extra than not enough in my eyes. Okay, now the sides. And then I will make sure I burnish it with my Teflon tool. I want to make sure it's on there real good. I don't want the tape coming up. Now on the edge of the paper, so along the outside perimeter, I am using three-fourths, nope, I lied, three-eighths of an inch score tape. So a lot of people use the one-fourth. That's fine too. It's whatever you have on hand. And the sides. Okay, that's done. Make sure that I've burnished it real well on the paper part two. I'm 
going to start taking the backing off my score tape and you want to make sure you remember to take off the um, backing of the tape in between the spine and the front and back cover. Come on. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to try it. Now, sometimes I have to use a tool for this. Um, this won't work. I'm going to use my sharp pin thing. That usually does the trick. And this one too while I'm at it. Come on. Okay. So as I have done before, I do put some uh, line of the art glitter glue uh, right up against the chipboard. It does soften the paper a little bit. Gets a nice corner edge. Okay. And I'll let that sit. Take off that piece of backing. And I work, uh, I push down in the middle and then go off to the sides. So I'm bringing it up. And I don't want to ripple there. I have never had that happen before. I had a little bit of a tear here, and with the artisan cardstock, I've never had that before. Huh. I will fix it. I'll cover it up with some ribbon or something. There's always a way to fix it. It just surprised me. So do the side opposite. And let's make sure we adhere it real well. And it did it on that side too. Huh. That's crazy. See what I'm talking about? There's a little bit of a, I'll have to cover something. That's crazy. Let me do this side without using the glue. Maybe I got it too wet. And so it was, so it ripped a little bit. side. Got to pinch in my, push in my corners here. Okay, so let me see here. I will put lace probably around there. Okay, so the last thing to do is um, I'm going to put paper on the inside along with my binding or my hinge. And so let me get the materials ready for the hinge and I'll be back.
the hinge piece needs to be eight and seven eighths by nine and a half. I do a half inch gusset, so we're going to start at the two inch and score, and then we're going to go every half inch, so two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five. Keep doing that until you get to seven and a half, and that'll be your last score line. So score at two, go every half inch until you get to seven and a half. That gives you a two inch wing on each side. Um, then we're going to do some. Folding now. So the first two, I'm um, the first two are going to make a peak. So I'm going to fold like so, and so you just fold back and forth. It's hard to describe how to do this. You want a hinge, and it's you need a peak like that and you're going to glue those together and that becomes a hinge okay that's upside down but and then these get glued together and then you have the half inch gusset so i fold back and forth to make sure it's strong or you know flexible so then this is going to be left alone i need another hinge so i'm going to burnish that but now I have to make sure I can fold it on each side. I don't know how to explain that. Okay, so now I have two hinges. So this is what it looks like. And I'll glue that one together and that one together. And so that's our two hinges and then a gusset. and space and let's go another mountain here and now i need to bend it the opposite direction on each side so So now you have three mountains and you're going to glue all those together. Last gusset and then I need another mountain. And you'll have to fold it the opposite way on each side so the other score marks on the side of the mountain get folded back and forth so that this stands. Okay, so it should look like this. And then we're going to run a piece of tape, score tape, in between to keep these together. And you're going to put a piece of tape on the gusset. The tape, oh my god, glue on my hand. A piece of tape in between the mountain to make it stick together. And then a piece of tape on the gusset. Okay. So I'm going to use 1 fourth inch. Just because I have a lot of that. So then these two will go together. So then I need a piece of tape on this. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. It's easier to tell. Don't need it. That's it. Don't need it. Guess it. And one more.
So, tape, skip, tape, tape, skip, tape, tape, skip, tape, tape, skip. Now we're going to take off the backing of just the ones that form the mountain. And I'm going to pinch that together. Okay, so it's like so. And I'm going to leave this tape piece on so that I can take it off and attach it to the book. So we're just getting rid of the tape that glues, to, that tapes to the other side to form the hinge. I keep saying mountain, but okay, so I took off the tape, so now I have two hinges, and I have the tape still on the gussets. Doing my third one. So you have three pieces of tape right next to each other and my last hinge. So that's what it looks like and you have the hinges, you have four of them. And now I'm going to place tape on the wings so that I can lay it down in my book like so. So let me get my book. I'm going to center it on that middle spine. I'm going to tape it down and then I will put decorative paper on each of these two sides. So this goes down first. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put tape on the rest of my wings and apply it to my spine. I put extra tape on the wings. It's time to put it down. We want to center it in this um, spine area. So we want about the same amount of overlap on each side. Um, besides putting tape on the back, you need to put tape along the top of the hinge on each side. So uh, tape goes on each side of the hinges as close to the top as you can. Okay, so now I'm going to start taking off the backing. And I'm going to do my best to center it. I did already put the paper on the outside. So I, have, I don't usually give measurements like for the decorative paper, the designer paper, but it's kind of a preference thing. Some people like a fourth of an inch, some people like an eighth of an inch shorter. It just kind of depends on what you like. Um, on the insides, I went seven, I'm gonna put seven and three eighths by nine and three eighths for the front and back cover on the inside. And I was running, I had to, I wanted to, the front and the back to be the same, so I only had one style of paper left that I had two pieces of, so that's how I decided what paper I was gonna put on the outside. Okay, so the tape is off. I'm going to center it in between here, so I have the same amount of overlap on each side, same amount of space top and bottom, so it does take a second to place it. And then you want to make sure you go in between each gusset and push down real well. Get that tape to adhere. Depending on what kind of paper you're using, you have to be careful so you don't rip it. This is where it's going to fold. So I'm trying to push the paper down in there. Remember I have tape in there. So I'm going to just kind of light, carefully bend it. And before I attach my pages, I'm going to go ahead and place my front end 
that cover. Like I said, I went seven and three eighths by nine and three eighths. I did go ahead and around the edges, I used the, um, I inked my edges. And I'm gonna use the art glitter glue. Get as close to the edge as I can because I want those corners to lay down and not come up. This is a bigger piece of paper. It's going to take a second. All right, that should do it. I'm always afraid I don't have enough, but. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and burnish it real well. Make sure my corners stay down. Looks like I got more of a space down here than up here. Okay, and now I'm going to do my back side. You can fast forward this part, it's kind of boring. Okay, fill on the inside. Hands starting to hurt. Okay, that should be good. I always say that, and then I go put more on. Okay, and line it up as close as I can. All right, I did a better job of the back page than I did on the front, and lining it up anyway, more even. Make sure the corners are down. All right, so it's time to put the pages in, and then I'm going to decorate the cover, and. Here's the paper I have on the outside front cover. I put some lace on the front and the back and then it meets in the center. And then I use the gold color on the back. All right, so starting with the last page, which is this one, I'm gonna have it go this way. And so I'm gonna take a little bit of tape off the top on each side and fold it down until I can get this the hinge, the um, page on, oopsie, um, and then I'll make sure it's on and then I'll pull the rest of it off. I hope that makes sense. I don't go all the way down to the bottom. You want to keep, keep, leave it up a little bit and kind of push over once it's on the hinge so you know it'll lay down. So let's see if I can show you this without screwing up. So I'm going to take a little piece off and just fold it off to the side on each of the ends okay can you see that how I just took a little bit off and now I'm going to place open that up okay I'm not all the way to the end or the bottom and I'm going to make sure I can bring it down I can, so I'm going to now take and pull the rest of this 
I hate it when that happens. I'm going to turn it sideways so I can see. Oop, that's not going to work. Let me pull some more off. All right, here we go again. Okay, I'm going to push down here, make sure it's attached, and then I'm going to come pull this side off. Ugh! Sassafras. Let me get a poker thing. Okay. Ooh, dream any Christmas. And then I just push real well to make sure it's on that hinge and it's going to stay on that hinge. And now I'm going to do the, let me tie this so it's not flapping all over the place. And I'm going to keep doing all of them so that I don't bore you. I'm just going to do one more and then I'll do the other two off screen just so I said it's kind of boring once you get the gist of it okay so here we go it's going to be on this side so I'm going to take hopefully I do a better job this time but you know what it happens I it's better to take a little bit off at a time than the whole thing because if you don't put it on right, sometimes it's hard to fix. You can't get the page off of the hinge and that's an issue. You don't want to deal with that. I've done that before. Okay, so I have two about almost halfway down. I'm going to place this on the hinge. I want to make sure that not only is it on the hinge but that it's lining up the same I want it to make sure that it's the same as the page built behind it. All right, I think that'll be good. Push down, come over to this side, finish taking this tape off. This time I'm holding it closer to the book so that it doesn't tear. Fabulous. Okay, push together. Okay, let me do the other two and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Let me show you the final walkthrough here. Um, now that I have all the pages in um, and my covers done. But this is what it looks like on the inside. I just made this a five and a half by seven and a half for a five by seven photo. Um, all the pages are in there now. This is what it looks like. This is the one that comes out. And I went ahead and did, oopsie, uh, the five and a half by seven and a half on the back too. So. There you go. That is my Dame by Authentique mini album. Um, if you have questions about the base pages, let me know. Um, I love this album and I hope you uh, find it useful. The tutorial is useful. Most of the things I use are from countrycraftcreations.com online. Um, super fast shipping and wonderful customer service. Uh, you won't be disappointed. All right. Thanks so much. 